Hello everyone, welcome to the Finger Thighs podcast. My name is Jana and I'm sitting here with... Benno, what's up? And yeah, first of all, we welcome you to our second episode. And also, thank you for everyone who gave us feedback on the last one and in general who listened to the last one. And we also want to apologize because at the first go we already broke our... A commitment of doing it bi-weekly. We're now at four weeks. Yeah, it didn't work out that well. <laughs> Let, let's see if we uh, keep it at four weeks or if we try to do two weeks in the future. We we will have to see how it works. Yeah, I mean, we're working and, uh, you know, how it is. You work and then you can't really plan all of that stuff. And then it's, it's getting winter, so uh, there was sickness involved as well. And the weather yeah. is quite wah and yeah. But we'll see. Uh, we try to be on a regular basis and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but let's jump right into it and let's go to our first topic. Our old section of back in my day. So today we're going to talk about parks and we're specifically talking about Black River parks from the like early 2000 era. and. I said Black River Parks, but basically there was nothing else. I don't think I ever ridden a non-Black River Park in that time. That wasn't something I made myself. So have you ridden a non-Black River Park from that time? Not that I can recall. There are actually there are no other companies or brands that were building parks as such. No, I don't think so either. I mean, there were a bunch of homemade ramps, but even those, they pretty much either copied Black River Rams or Lacked done in professionality. Yeah, or, or they also done like a variation that Black River did or would do. Like none of them were like outside the box or were building real street spots and all of the things you have today. It was basically a bunch of a uh, bunch of rams and like huge imagine huge rams yeah that that was i was getting at like they they were enormous like when i came back to fingerboarding and i saw the the parks how they are today they all seemed really small and back then like when you looked at at a at a word ramp like the big mama back then that was a size that you don't have in the Big Mama or a similar word ramp today. Like, the height of it was probably nearly 40 centimeters or something like that. And banks were really, really steep. And like a single, a single box, like some curb, was basically two times or three times the size that you would do that curb today. They were actually massive, but the thing is, um, back then we only had tech decks, twenty-seven millimeters, crappy, crappy trucks, crappy wheels. Everything was a bit off, anyway. I mean, we already had Berlin woods, but still, they yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as technical as much. We had these massive yeah. ramps, these massive kickers, big boxes, and yeah, as as you said, the 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 the, uh, the word ramp back then was a massive beast. Uh, I've seen a few photos of kids where they are. Th this thing is chest high, basically. Yeah, and, and also, um, most people back then were still riding skate grip, and because uh, foam grip wasn't around till a few years later, and yeah, so the the boards weren't as wide, the trucks weren't really good. You couldn't turn like some do still today. Um, the wheels were weird until Winkler wheels came around. And um, yeah, I think that all added to less technical riding and loads of big airs and big grinds and because everything, everything had to be big because all the obstacles were big. Do you miss that? Because I do sometimes. Yeah, sometimes do I do. Like sometimes when I'm at the store and I see the Curve Cut 2 that Timo has there, 
I sometimes bust that thing out because I used to love that in back in the day, like Curb Cut 1 and Curb Cut 2 were my favorite drums back then because I could only write transition back in the day, I didn't know why and that thing had enough transition for me to write it and yeah, that thing was my favorite thing ever and when I write it today it's like you really have to work to get from one side to the other especially if you're trying to do a flip trick that is quite tough and back then that was normal I've seen uh, Boris Dici do Bible flip nose grind on that thing and uh, even though this is a pretty standard trick for me doing that on a curb cut on that specific thing is impossible seriously this thing is so massive that I can't do this um, for those of you who don't know what the curb cut is or what we're talking yeah, about, yeah, we should think about a box like think about the American curb cuts, right? These these mini escape video curb cuts where they jump over, super size that thing to the max. Um, the banks are really steep on that thing, um, and then you've got two massive rails on each bank, and there's a gap between them where you have the flat table on top. And I'd say, I'd measure the distance is 30 centimeters a foot. Yeah, much. probably. And also the banks itself are also around 30 centimeters. So you have a length of close to one meter. And the whole thing was, I think, maybe 25 centimeters tall or something like that. 25 to 30. Yeah, and both, both banks were curved inward. And it basically launched you to the other side. So here's a shameless self-promotion. I did a video on... Um, so Black River released that thing as a downward rail only, and it's just one side of the curb cut without the uh, sort of transition at the end. I did a video on this on my Instagram channel a while ago, and all I can say is it's too steep. I couldn't do any tricks on them because but, it's just... It's massively but that, steep. That thing looks a bit m steeper than the original curb cut, because the original curb cut was more curved. The original curb cut is in fact a bit smaller, yeah, that's true. I've got yeah, that somewhere at home at my grandparents' house. Yeah. And also it's at the Azzy store, so if you come by, bust out that old thing and... Get the see. odd looks from the locals. <laughs> <laughs> Always works. It's great fun, that thing. Yeah, it is, once in a while. So yeah, yeah, but basically all, all ramps were oversized and... A couple months ago, I was with a few other locals in Hamburg and they had one Black River Park that is a bit more a modern one and also one that was the G3. Mm. So, Big that, love for that thing. Yeah, me too. The G3 was my favorite park ever. There were two versions of the G3. The one had Curb Cut 1 and the other had the Curb Cut 2. I know and the one with the curb cut one. Yeah, me, me too. I know both. And yeah, in Hamburg they had the one with the curb cut two, so the wider one. And riding that park after riding all the parks in the Azzy store for two years, it felt really weird. Even though I ridden that park countless times back in the day, it felt so weird having like the steep bank that you talked about with the downward rail or like a London gap that was basically I don't know 20 centimeters high and stuff like that and you really had to put work in your tricks yeah and also behind uh, there was like a box in the middle like the regular uh, bank on both sides curb on the top but on that park that thing had like a bigger curb on the back side which was like around 30 centimeters high. Was that the stone thing? No, 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 the the big wooden rectangular oh, that, box. Th that box that never made sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> it never made sense, <laughs> but I sometimes did some tricks on there. And yeah, ha having to do a contest run on that one, because in Hamburg you had to do a run on every park. It was, it was weird riding that thing after so many years. I want to do that again. I can I have no. Um, I have no idea where to go um, to ride that park again. So I'm pretty fine anyway with what we have today. Yep. If you want to see what we're talking, or what we were talking about, check out Pissing Fingers One on YouTube, and you get a pretty good idea what these yeah, parts one and were two. like. 
And if you haven't seen either one, just watch it, because that is pretty much history. Because those were the first video. I, I think I had the first one on VHS. Oh, I was way more advanced. That was one of my first DVDs I got right after The Matrix. That I, the Matrix was my first DVD. Right after that, I got Pissing Fingers on DVD. Crazy. Maybe I still have it somewhere. But yeah, so basically, I think we're both happy with how Black River developed the parts over the years. And you get more versatile as well. Yeah, and you can do a lot more technical tricks. and Yeah, so... It, it's cool that we have that today, and but it's also cool to, once in a while, write the old stuff. Yeah, but think about the last thing as a final closing word. Um, have you seen the Aussie 10 Contest Park? And now compare that thing to one of the old parks. It's yeah. very technical, very flat, very low. Um, you've got many, many spots. There's a lot that to be discovered on that park. There isn't, there isn't much on it uh, in terms of ramp-like. Yeah, but there's so many spots you can ride. Back in back in the old parks, you had this big setup, and there weren't really any spots. Apart yeah, from you those could that were basically made up walk you. around the park a couple times, and I mean Ramon did that on the Aussie Park, but like three times or something. I yeah. mean, he went. Around, he was mad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there wasn't much lines you can take other than the ones that were specifically created to be ridden. Like, yeah, there was one way to ride it, and that was basically the only way. Well, no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> but I obviously meant the old parts, not the new ones. But yeah, let's uh, jump into the next topic. Um, this one is rapid fire. I don't know it's why It's a shame I said you that. can't see what I just did. Rapid fire, the, the karate chops move. It's not a video podcast. Anyway, next th last week it was me. Rapid fire. This time it's Jana. So let's get right into it. What's your favorite wheel? Used to be Oaks, now it's flat face. All right, perfect. Uh, favorite uh, deck and shape? Uh, five lock, uh, full shape, 35 millimeter. Nice. Uh, favorite trick on flat? Uh, 360 pop shove it. Favorite obstacle trick? Uh, hard flip back tail or hard flip blonde. Uh, favorite obstacle then? Uh, the big rail on my park. All right, fair enough. Outdoor or indoor fingerboarding? Indoor all the time. All the time. Instagram name? Uh, Jana.kla.fb uh, It's K-L-A-R for those of you. Um, the, Instagram, the Instagram name. We had that. Concrete or wood? Uh, concrete. So what do you prefer? Switch or regular? Regular. Uh, flat ground with obstacle or full park? Full park. Uh, ramen or burger? Burger. All right. Heel or kickflip? Heel. Favorite fingerboarder? Uh, Fabian Schreiter. Let me say a few words. Um, Fabi, I don't think most of you still know him, which is a shame. Uh, Fabi, better known as Afrobi, used to be a fingerboarder from early 2000, and he's been around up until a few years ago. He sometimes posts clips now, but yeah, his focus has shifted. But he was one of the first really technical fingerboarders, and he was one of the first guys that I've seen do like a nolly flip and stuff like that and he's on Berlinwood has a pro model there he has a signature wheel uh, with uh, Winkler the yellow uh, Big Daddies because yellow was his color or is his color and yeah he's probably still my favorite fingerboarder well wow, first contest uh, probably Deutsche Meisterschaft so German Championship 2004 could be something else before that some smaller ones but that's the first big one Right, last trick learned. Uh, nolly tray lip slide. Nice. Uh, most hated trick. Uh, nolly pop shove it, nolly 360 pop shove it, and fakey tray. Favorite beer? Um, I can't think of... Uh, Grevensteiner. Oh yeah, fingerboarding solo or drunk? A little bit drunk, a few beers. All right, game of skate or game of bacon? Uh, right now I'm more leaning towards game of skate. That's a shame, really. Game of Bacon is awesome. How do you write? Tucked or stretched? Uh, stretched. Always written that way. Uh, so what are your sponsors, then? Uh, sadly, none other than myself. Uh, dream sponsors? Uh, five Luck. I really would like 
uh, riding for five luck. If like my number two pick would be Galaxy Flowers, because I like those boards very much as well. But yeah, one of those two. If they ask me, I would probably say yes. Favorite Instagram follow? Skaten Bacon Beast. It's a SK8. Jeez, follow that man. Kid. I mean, kid. Yeah, that kid. Favorite overall company? And I guess it's not Apple. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, yeah, probably also Five Luck, because that, cool, that dude seems really cool. And yeah, he lives in a cabin and everything. And I like how he's like true to handmade and. Yeah, in a time where a lot of people order stuff from China or Russia and say they made it themselves, it's quite cool. I think that wraps it up for Rapid Fire this week. Yeah, it was... <laughs> and you did that weird dance again. <laughs> yeah, the karate chops. Yeah. I mean, this should be, there should be a jingle for this section, right? And I'm, I'm imagining, because it's Rapid Fire, there's some karate chops and... Some, some effects going on and a, and a funky jingle and stuff, you know, um, but that's just me. Right? Maybe in the future we can add some jingles. Uh, also, um, while we're on the topic on things we want to do in the future, um, a lot of people suggested fixes on, or improvements on the audio. I think it's a bit better this time, but we're thinking about buying a real mic, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, guys, bear with us. Um, the audio quality is not up to what we expect or hope to be. Um, we checked online for a bit of equipment and it's uh, pricey. So we have to make do with what we have at the moment. That does not mean we're not going to improve. So just bear with us, please. We know it's weird. Once we get it on the way, we probably invest a bit. Yeah, so um, let's go to the news section. There's not much this week. Like... We probably missed a few stock drops and everything. Yeah. Because, to be honest, that that is quite hard to keep track of and to keep up with. And also, a lot of those stock drops were in the States, and we don't really order stuff from the States that, that often, because it's quite expensive. But yeah, sometimes when it's an unexpected one, I think we'll talk about it. Yeah, but this time let's let's focus on my favorite fingerboard company, Berlin Wood. They dropped, um, I think, two line, one line of fingerboards, and this awesome. Um, I, I say awesome because now now I've seen it and I've held it in my hands. There's black I got one. gold pattern board. Um, I wasn't really impressed from looking at the pictures because uh, I was. I had to buy one immediately, and I'm not sure if I even gonna set it up. Like. I'm usually someone who sets up all the boards, that's why I have so many, but yeah, this one I will keep at, le at least for a bit. And yeah, also besides this one, Berlin Wood also released a whole bunch of new graphics. They released uh, one or two pro models and also the, the big one we want to talk about, the Bastelboards Collab. Bastelboards, if you don't know, know that, is a German company who does longboards. Yeah, and they have like a very distinct style of graphics. Mm, I fancy them. Yeah, and they, yeah, they released three graphics uh, that are originally made for, for longboards and they now are on Berlin Woods. Um, to, to brag a bit, <laughs> I knew about this a collab for a few months. Uh, to be exact, I knew it since Azi, because I got one of those boards at the Azi uh, from the uh, Black River owner. And the one I have is actually an unreleased graphic, so yeah, I don't think I <laughs> that's worth anything, because I already already written it and everything but yeah it's still the new line is quite cool and I'm a bit sad to, to not see the one that I have because I really like that graphic because I had like a purple one but yeah the released ones are also okay like I don't like them as much but you like them quite well I heard yeah so before we go into that 
my favorite color is purple. The board you have isn't really my style. Maybe that's why they didn't release it. Anyway, um, they've got three colors if I, as far as I remember. There's the wood board, which is the overall tone is green. Then there's the fire board, which is red. And this is the one I got um, because I've seen the board and I sort of like the style. This, this red flamey board and now I've got red oak wheels on my new board that I bought last week but I ordered the new board because it's it's burning wood it's a best collaboration it's brilliant I, I like it and you aren't really one who buys new boards all the time no not really if I buy a board and then I ride it for uh, quite some time until it loses pop or I accidentally put it in the washing machine or lose it um, I'm not in the habit of buying boards that often in not fact, I bought, unlike a, me. I bought a new board from the Aussie shop directly, the Aussie Berlin graphic, uh, in white last week, because I fancy white boards. But I've seen the red one online, and I thought, you know, I have to have it, because I now got red wheels, which is odd, because I don't really like red. Um, but this board really got me, and that's why i going to ride it. And yeah, I don't have that many boards. I have two boards, um, one sideboard, one I use on a regular basis, and the sideboard hasn't been touched for two weeks now so I got one board basically other than that there's the Candy Jacobs Pro model which is her big board as a fingerboard then the Joachim Mendes Guego sorry for butchering your name mate <laughs> really sorry about that yeah and yeah so his pro model and other than that there's uh, a flat face Collabo and two Inpedo collabos. Uh, Inpedo is a Berlin skate, uh, Berlin-based skate company. Yeah, they they are quite cool, and I like those graphics. So, and they also sponsored Azi. They were a big sponsor. Yeah. Cheers. Shout out to Inpedo boards. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That was that for the Berlin wood uh, graphic release. Um. Other than that, of the of the stock drops that I mentioned earlier, there was only one that I was really interested in, and that was the Waisaki wheels stock drop. I haven't heard from Waisaki in a while. Like I looked once in a while, and every wheel I wanted was out of stock. And Waisaki are a bit special when it comes to wheels, because I mean. They are also urethane, and there are like a billion companies now that do urethane wheels. But they have something that they call the uh, bearing lock technology or something like that. What's the bearing lock technology? Yeah, the, it's basically um, a way... I, I, f I don't know how it works exactly, but it's probably that there is something in the wheel. So once the bearing is in there, it won't come out ever and I never replaced bearings on any of my wheels never but, have I but I had some bearings slip out on my oaks or some of my oaks and yeah I'm, I'm quite interested to see how those wheels perform and they also look gorgeous like they have a lot of swirl colors and in general a lot of colors and yeah I'm really interested how they look and feel in person. I ordered two sets for myself. Let's see how, how they perform. There were also other wheels that got released since our last podcast. The Jay Linehan wheels uh, from Flatface. And we both know someone who is basically in love with them. And yeah, they, they look quite nice and feel quite nice. They're a bit softer than the usual flat face wheels. I'm actually envious of him right now, as of right now. Um, I ordered the G4 flat face earlier um, before they were released. Now, I like the flat face wheels. They're great. They, they actually roll. As somebody who's using Oaks primarily, there's a huge difference. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yes. Um, <laughs> So I got the G4s, so I'm quite happy with them, but he he ordered a couple of days later, he ordered the J Linda hands. He asked me if I want them, I said no, because uh, I couldn't afford another set. They arrived 
he put them on, I gave it a test ride, I was envious. Now the street shape, if you have the G4s in mind, it's a bit narrower, it's a street shape, um, a bit more rounded on the corners, and the material is slightly different. But these wheels are, they're, they're just I'm envious. I, I'm at a loss of words because these wheels are great. If only I would have waited a few days later. Yeah, maybe maybe we get a chance to buy them in the store. Um, let's see if that works out. That would be awesome. I would definitely buy a set myself. Another 50 quid spent on wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, let's talk about events. Um, there's not that much going on. I think, yeah, or we think. Um, there's one thing, but it's probably too late for all of you, or if it's not, then you're probably too far away anyway. Um, the Aussie shop Berlin, like the former uh, Black River Rams shop, has its first birthday since it got rebranded as Aussie Store. Yay, first anniversary! Brilliant. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to it. I hope I'm my sickness doesn't return and I'm able to go there and yeah it's it's gonna be great I think because usually when there's like a bigger event at the store there is people from all around Germany and even Europe like some people coming from uh, the bordering countries and yeah, it's it's really cool to see people that you don't see that often uh, or you haven't met before and yeah, just play a game of skate or trade or yeah, really yeah. looking forward. It's really a shame for uh, most of you. You might be listening to the podcast after the 3rd of November uh, or even on the 3rd of November directly. Um, it's a shame, but you can... Um, if you go on Reddit or Discord, you can always, like, this lad from uh, Sweden, I think it was, a couple of weeks ago, asked on Reddit um, if anybody's in the, in the shop. So if you don't have the, the option to go on Saturday, just look out for, for us on Reddit and, uh, and what's the name? Discord? Yeah. I almost forgot. And then we can meet up anyway and play a nice game of skate, have a couple of beers, burger, Absolutely. Um, and whatever. Yeah, and other than that, there's only the online video contest coming to an end, the Halloween video contest from Fingercan. Yeah, and I act actually uh, did a video for that, so I'm participating. You have seen her hand around on Instagram and Facebook without knowing, I'm sure. Probably, yeah. A little teaser, you know. It's like, I don't expect much from that video, because it's not that it was half-assed, because I really put a lot of effort into it, but like the contest requires an intro from one minute, and yeah, all the videos from the previous years were quite uh, uh, quite sophisticated and a bit scary, and yeah, mine is a bit more on the slapstick side, and the uh, a bit more of the bad horror movie from the 80s sides of things with bad effects and bad acting and yeah but it really was a blast filming that and you helped quite a lot and yeah I hope I finish it in time because my editing skills aren't that great I haven't edited on a computer in years so yeah let's hope that that it turns out okay and that a few people like it and yeah that's basically all I want out of that video if I get some prizes that would be awesome but yeah don't expect much right so I think that pretty much wraps it up for this time's uh, listening session um, and it's actually late um, I'm at a loss of words <laughs> And I think this time we managed to stay around 30 minutes. So before we hit the 30 minute mark, let's just say bye. And well, thank we have you for 30 listen. seconds left, so we don't have to rush it. But yeah. Um, thank you for listening. And see you in two to four weeks. Or you listen to us. So bye. All right. See you around. See you around. See you around. See you around.